Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And praise his holy name and worship him in spirit and in truth for he alone is worthy of all glory, all honor and all of our praises. Amen. So while I live like the psalm that says I will bless the Lord, I will sing praises unto him while I have my being. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, somebody. Not only that, but my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. My soul shall make itself boast in the Lord, not brag. My soul shall make itself boast in the Lord. I heard that the humble will hear thereof and be glad. Come on, somebody. Magnify the Lord with me. Come on, let us exalt him. Come on, exalt him. Come on, exalt him in the earth. For he is worthy. He is worthy. The Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land. Come on somebody. You've already entered into his gates. Come on be thankful and praise his name. Come on bow down and worship him. Come on and lift him up. Come on and magnify him. For his goodness and his mercy. Towards us. (laughs) towards us amen for his goodness his grace and his mercy that he allows to follow after us and overtake us amen anybody glad to be in the fellowship one more time anybody glad to be in his presence amen the spirit of the lord is in this place and where the spirit of the lord is i heard the word says that there is liberty so come on and lift your hearts out of whatever was you were going through and lift your spirit out of whatever is holding you and rejoice in the lord and all that he means to you amen Because he is still risen. Amen. Come on and give him praise. Because he is still worthy. Come on and give him praise. Come praise him. Praise him. I had a four-year-old that asked me this week. Just the other day. He said, Nana, why does Jesus wear a rag around his head? sometimes people ask you questions and you was like okay now how do I make this plain for a four year old so I said baby you know how you wear your do-rag I said it's a culture in our culture that we wear a do-rag and his brother would always tell him you need to put your do-rag on so that you keep your hair right and so I said Jesus wore a do-rag, but it was called a turban. But that was his culture. That's why he wore that rag around his head. If a four-year-old wants to know why Jesus wore a do-rag, come on, somebody. Do you have any questions about God? Is there anything that you need to know right now? Bow down before the master right now and ask in the spirit. And I promise you, God will give you the exact words to say that is fitting. If anybody asks you a question about God, he promises in his word that he will open up your mouth and give you what to say. The fields are white. The fields are white. Let us go out into the hedges, out into the highways, and just answer the questions just listen by the spirit and god will open up your mouth allow him to do what he wants to do through you this day give him praise the bible says behold the bible says behold thou shalt call a nation that thou knoweth not and nations that seek not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have compassion on him and abundantly pardon. Amen. That should be our hope. That should be our mission 
in these days. In Jesus' name, may we pray. Father God, we stretch our, our hands to thee. No other help we know. Lord, bring us into a closer relationship with you. Draw us nearer, Lord. Draw us nearer. And prick our hearts, God, that we might be about your business. You say it's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, God. So prick us, God. Create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit, God. That we might be willing, surrendered vessels to do what you would have us to do. Order our steps, God. Bless us, God. Put a word in our heart and then bring it up to remembrance as needed in our mouths, God, that we might speak what thus says the Lord. Bless as only you can. This service, this service, those that are waiting in presence in this building, those that are virtually, those that are on the conference line, God, bless, God, move. Because we know, we trust, we believe that you are in all places at all times. So bless as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again.
Good morning. The Lord is blessing me right now. Are you glad about it? The Lord is blessing me right now. Thank you, Father, for keeping me on your mind and for blessing me to wake up this morning by your touch. Today I'll be reading the scripture. The scripture is coming from Luke. 24th chapter, 36 through 44 verses. 24th chapter of Luke, 36 through 44 verses. And it reads, while they were talking about this, Jesus himself suddenly stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a spirit. And he said, Why are you troubled? And why are you doubts? Why are doubts rising in your hearts? Look at the marks in my hands and on my feet and see that it is I myself touch me and see a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have after saying this he showed them his hands and feet while they still did not believe it because of their joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in front of them. Then he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything which has been written about me in the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Let us pray. Father God, almighty God, there is no one like you. Lord, you blessed us to be here today. And we ask that you come in this place. Let your spirit fill it. Father, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth to let you know that your people are ready to hear from you. For you, Lord, Jehovah Jireh, my protector, you are my healer, Lord, and I know this to be true. When I was sick in my body, when my feet were wrapped in pain, my knees just wouldn't let me go. But Father, when I turn it over to you, oh, what joy you brought into my life. You stood me up to walk straight. Father God, I didn't even know that I was all humped over, checking my steps to make sure that I stepped on solid ground, no cracks, no rocks. And I thank you, Father, for being able to walk this day, talk with you and my loved one. For God, you keep on blessing us. So many blessings you bestowed unto us. We just got to take the time to say, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because there's no one like you. No one else can do us, heal us, bless us, keep us like you. And I thank you, Father, that you are able to do everything you set out to do. You've already told us 
what's ahead. You know our past. You know us today. And you know our future. Father, we just ask this day that you come on in to this place. Let your spirit fall fresh on us. Let us be obedient to the word that your son is going to bring this day for our hearing. Let us be doers of your word and not just hearers. The word need us. Father, we need you. And we ask him, asking God just to lead us and guide us in the path that you would have us to take. For you showed us it's love. It's all about the love, Father, the love you showed to us when you gave us your son who went up on the cross, went up on the cross, Father, and stayed there all the pain and agony that he suffered, all the name calling, the mockery. Father, he stayed there for us. He died on your cross. He bore our sins so that we may have a right to eternal life. And we, Father, sometimes don't understand why so many things happen to us. And we call upon your name, but we don't let it go. Once we call on your name and give you our problems, we need to let it go, God. We need to let it go, trust, and wait on you. Because you have an answer for us today. But we got to be willing to let go of the pain, let go of the hurt. Hurt will always be around, but we got to let it go. Let it go long enough for love to set in your heart, to reach out to others, to show love. Forgive. Forgive your sisters, your brothers, your aunts, uncle, cousins. Don't let that hinder you from being with your father. Father, you are good always, all the time, every day, every hour, every moment. You are good in spite of our evil ways, in spite of our flaws, in spite of our dependency on ourselves and not turning over to you. The word says, give all your troubles and cares to the Lord, because he's able. He's able, but sometimes, Father, we forget about it, and we get locked in and set upon those things that are not going to be worth anything for our heavenly journey. We got to let it go. Wait. Trust. And believe, because you are able to carry us through. I ask your blessing upon everyone that's here today, Father, and especially upon our pastor. Let his word ring out. Let your voice speak through him. We thank you for this day. In the precious name of Jesus, thank you, God, for this day. Amen. Amen.
Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Somebody ought to shout amen. Come on, those of us who are still in the land of the living. We ought to be grateful that God has graced us another day. Isn't it a beautiful day outside? Come on now, let's give God some praise, what he's worth. Has God done anything for you that you are grateful for? I need just three people who are thankful, who are grateful for what God is doing in their life. Come on, I need somebody to help me shabak my Lord in here. Come on, let the redeemed say, so where's my righteous remnant who came today with their A praise, who came with an expectation to rendezvous their God? We thank God for each of you all in the presence of our Lord and Savior. Thanks be to God. I want to just <clears throat> extend a, a, a appreciation to the Creek family for how you all showed up for the Dunn family yesterday. Come on, you can give God. That's, why I, that's what I love about us. That's what I love about us. We show up. We thank God for the spirit, the spirit of help, the spirit of benevolence and hospitality that you all show one another for God is truly going to repay you for your diligence. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each of you all who are joining us, whether it's in person or whether you're joining us virtually on our conference call. We welcome you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Sunday morning service here at the Creek. You belong here today. Amen. And if there is anyone who is visiting for the first time, or maybe you're just visiting from another part of the body of Christ we want to love on you. We want to recognize you today. If you would, either extend your hand in the air, let us see you, or either stand to your feet and let us love on you. Any visitors, anybody want to just put their hand in the air? I see you. Come on. Show them how we love. Blessings. Blessings to you, each of you. If uh, you desire, I would love to give you a fist bump after service. If you have time, amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to be preparing for our announcements. Amen. I want to make sure that you all are staying connected. It's important to stay connected. Amen. There's only so much fellowship and, and growth you can do in the pews. All right. The rest of the spiritual growth and the, 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 uh, the fellowship happens outside of Sunday morning worship. Did you hear? Did you hear what I said? So it's important that we stay connected, that we get involved in what God has going on in this house. And God has so many things going on. I want you all to make sure that we are supportive of all the ministries, all the auxiliaries, and all the functions that we have going on. Amen? So at this time, I want you to have your pens out. I want you to have your calendars out, your iPhones, your Androids, whatever it is that you take notes with, wherever your Outlook calendar is, so we can take care of what God has going on in this house. Good morning, Basil Creek family and friends. We are so glad you decided to join us today. Attention everyone. Please observe the no parking sign in front of the garage. Garage doors should be free of blockage in case the vans are needed. Anyone interested in playing bingo, please join the senior ministry each first and third Thursday of the month. The next meeting is April the 20th. Please bring your lunch, and for details, see Sister Faye Garrett. The Women's Ministry will host its next virtual read-along and book discussion of Woman Evolved by Sarah Jakes Roberts via Zoom on April the 24th at 7 p.m. See Lady Marcia with any questions. Basil Creek Youth will have their spring outing on April the 23rd at Buffalo Lane South starting at 1 p.m. You can sign up on our website.
basilcreekmbc.org. We will have Children's Church on April the 23rd, May the 21st, and June the 25th. Please consider signing your child up to lead scripture and or prayer on a Children's Church Sunday. An in-person church conference will be held on Saturday, April the 22nd at 11 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. North Carolina Poet Laureate Jackie Shelton Green will appear at the Holly Springs Cultural Center on Saturday, April the 22nd from 4 to 6 p.m. Registration is $15. Please see Minister Carol Sampson for details. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Our men's ministry is going fishing at Parker's Creek at Jordan Lake on April the 29th from 9 a.m. to noon. Visit basilcreekmbc.org, our website, or see Brother Kevin Collins to sign up. Reverend Patterson's office hours are Tuesday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturday, by appointment. Bible study is held on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via Facebook and our conference line on the 2nd through the 5th Wednesdays. Bible study is held in person on the first Wednesday of the month with a focus on grief support. Our main telephone conference number is 605-562-8401, and the access code is 2206554. Please join us on our conference line for prayer on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. The Outreach Ministry is asking each member to bring a food donation on the first Sunday of the month. Our food market is held every first Saturday of the month in the Aussie Stinson's Fellowship Hall located on the lower level. We appreciate your prayers and gifts. Giving can be done via collection plates, P.O. Box 1295, Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina 27526, org, our website, or drop off on Sundays between 1030 and 11. Blessings. Stay strong, stay focused, and trust God. Amen. Thank you for all those announcements. Before we have our pre-sermonic song, we want to bless all of the tithes, the offerings, and the gifts that have been given to this house. Amen? And those of you all who are able, will you stand to your feet as we thank God for all these gifts. Pray with me, beloved. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your provision. God, we thank you for the jobs and paychecks that, that we take care of our homes with, Lord. And we thank you that you have thought enough of us, God, to partner with us, Lord, that we might also take care of the things of your household. So right now, God, we lift up these tithes, these offerings and gifts to you, O oh God, that you would press them down, that you would shake them together till they're running over, Lord. God, multiply so your need will be met. Multiply, God, so we might feed your sheep. Multiply, God, so we might build your kingdom, God. And bless every giver and those who wanted to give. Let their houses be covered. Let their houses be protected and provided for God. Thank you, Lord, for every cheerful giver. I pray right now, God, that they be able to give out of surplus and not lack. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone is well. We're going to
gonna try this song right here. Come on, how many of us have made it? 
on the other side of your problems. Some of y'all might still be in your predicaments, but thanks be to God, he's a keeper, is he not? Come on, I made it. Come on, make that declaration. Even if you're still in the heat of your battle, I made it and I'm still here. Out of every wicked scheme that the enemy had planned for me, I made it and I am still here. After every wind of life tried to blow me off of the rock, I made it and I am still here. Thank God. Thank God for the rock. Thank God for the rock. Thank God for the safe tower, the strong tower that keeps us. Thank God for the standard. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. Come on, I need someone who's been through something before. Come on, you don't have time this morning to be cute. Come on, you need to give your testimony right now. Come on, I need two or three people who are over the age of 40 who've been through something right now. Come on, let's declare it to the atmosphere. Let's sing it to the Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. Look, we have made it past 100% of every situation. Thank God I didn't wake up in the ICU today. Thank God I didn't have to visit the NICU. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't have to get here in an ambulance, God. Thank you, Lord. Still here. Come on, you ought to say it to the master. Just master say, I made it, God. Only because of you, Lord. Only because of your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Only because of your loving kindness. Only because of your faithfulness, Lord. Morning by morning by morning by morning new mercies we see, God. Ah, that's why we can rest with blessed assurance. Blessed assurance that we're still here. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Come on, you ought to turn to your neighbor if your neighbors and say, I don't know what's wrong with you this morning, but I made it. Say, y'all need a little bit of coffee or something this morning. Say, we a little tired. We a little tired, but I made it. Said, I might have a little sickness in my body, but I made it. My joints might be acting up, but I made it. My allergies might be on fleek right now, but I made it. Thank you, God, for we made it. Come on, if that's your testimony, give God a hand clap of adoration and praise. For we made it, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Give this men's choir and musicians some appreciation. Tevin, I think they're waiting on us, man. When we going to get up there, bro? I'm waiting on you. I'll go when you go. Amen. But thank God for these men's choir. Thank God for godly men. Can I just take a moment and... Come on, we didn't have to go to Central Prison. Come on, we didn't have to go to the state psychiatric place. We have godly men here who are examples, not only in the church, y'all, but in the community. Amen? Come on, and let's give God a hand clap of praise for strong men. For strong black men. For strong black men. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Can we give a hand clap of appreciation to our God that everyone they put on the news, that those stories are not all true, that we know some examples of some Christian disciples who know how to lift up the name of Jesus. Thanks be to God for strong fathers, for strong men, for leaders in the community. Amen. Amen. There's a word for the Lord. I don't want to belabor your time, but I want to give you this word before we depart here. We return to the Lucan gospel. 
You heard it read so eloquently by Grace Is it? So I won't reread it, but I will quote one part of it. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God lasts forever. I want to give this sermonic lesson the title, Wounded But Willing. Amen. Wounded but willing. Pray with me. Loving and eternal God, we thank you. We just bask in your glory, God. We are amazed, Lord, how you could think so much about us, that you would give us your breath, that you loved us enough to give us your son. Now, oh God, as we preach this word of God, I ask God that if there be any impediments, any hindrances, God, that would prevent us from hearing the word and doing the word, applying it and building your kingdom, let them be removed right now, God. Let all of our gates be open for our ear gates, God, to receive the word of God, that our faith might be increased, that we might do the work of your kingdom. Now, God, allow me to decrease so you might increase, Lord. Hide me behind your rugged cross in Jesus' name. Wounded but willing. In today's sermon lesson, after the resurrection, we find the disciples understandably shaken by the previous violent and deadly events. All of the progress they had made in the previous three years had been erased in three days. The violent and traumatic separation from Jesus, their leader, their rabbi and friend, interrupted their peace and stripped them of their joy. They retreated and locked themselves in a room. They were hiding from their oppressors, trying to avoid the reality that their lives were in danger. There were rumors of roaming angry mobs, vindictive officials, and bounty hunters that were after them. The disciples were petrified by fear and blinded by their grief. The trauma of what they had seen was too much for anyone to bear. Stuck in survival mode, they had no plan for the future, no way of escape. The very room they had locked themselves in for protection was also the same prison keeping them helplessly and hopelessly trapped in the past. While they were trembling in the midst of their suffering, while they were still scared and in pain, when all hope seemed to be lost, help me, Holy Ghost, Jesus showed up. Back from the cosmic trip, from all through God's kingdoms, through pain, through death, down into the abyss of ultimate suffering, up to glory and back again, Jesus showed up in the midst. And here's the interesting thing. The first thing he says is peace be with you. I, I had to scratch my head, Ben, on that one. I understand that he is the Prince of Peace, but the first thing he says when he shows up to his disciples is not, what's up? How y'all been? What's going on? Where my mama at? But he says, peace be with you. I want to submit to you today that the reason he said peace, the first thing that came out of his mouth he restored the peace of his disciples because it was the first thing that we lost in the Garden of Eden when sin entered the world was our peace. Did you hear what I said? 
See, the word peace in this context means the space between individuals and freedom from death. Can I work with it a little bit? You see, sin caused that separation between humanity and God. And death is the ultimate separation. And yet, death was the only way to return to God. Somebody say, until Easter. Until Easter, 2,000 years ago, suffering and death were a prerequisite to achieve peace. I'm going to say that one more time till somebody catches it. I said until 2,000 years ago, it took blood, suffering, and death to achieve peace. But thanks be to God this morning that we serve the Prince of Peace. How many of you all are excited about Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace? How many of you all are excited that Jesus can step into your storm and calm the winds and the waves by just saying, peace, be still? I just want to thank God because Jesus is the Lord of peace that gives you peace all the time, every day, Monday through Sunday, January through December, midnight to midnight. He is. If you serve Jesus, then you are blessed to be a peacemaker and you are a son and daughter of God. Can I tell you what Isaiah chapter 53 says? It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds. We are healed. Did you catch that? It wasn't just his glory. It was the wounds. Y'all not going to help me this morning. If you go back a few verses in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 26 says this. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? You know what that means? Literally, it means that Jesus had to go through hell to retrieve your peace. Did you hear what I said, beloved? Can anybody get excited that Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that one who knew no sin, the Lamb of God, literally hung on a cross and let mere mortals kill his body so he could descend into hell to get your peace back. If that don't get you on your feet, nothing will. He had to go through hell. You know what that means for us? That means that because of his stripes, because of his crown of thorns, because of the bloody cross, because of Calvary, your suffering is now the gateway to your solace. Because Jesus has conquered death and he restored our path to peace and he bridged the chasm between humanity and God. And now I no longer have to give a blood sacrifice. I can give him a sacrifice of praise. Because of his enduring love, because he completed his mission, now, beloved, you can have peace in the midst of your problems. Can I talk to three people this morning? Because of Christ, your predicament can be the birthplace of your peace. That's why the scriptures tell us, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not become discouraged. For the battle was never yours. It was always mine. Jesus said, all I need you to do is proclaim my name. Lift up the banner and tell the world. I like the story. Of Simon the Ceredian, when they forced him to carry the cross, they said, pick up this condemned man's cross. Simon was just on vacation. He was just there in Jerusalem trying to enjoy all of the festivities. And Jesus, the mission and the cross interrupted his vacation plans. I know he didn't have that on booking.com. But when he carried that cross for Christ, as soon as he got to the foot of Golgotha, somebody as soon as he got to the foot Jesus said that's far enough baby I got it from here you know what that means for us that means I can have peace even when I'm upset 
I can have peace when I got an attitude. I can have peace when I'm wounded. I can have peace in the midst of my anger. I can have peace when I'm frustrated because Jesus, he carries the load. He carries the load. That's why we can be wounded and willing. And I understand that some of you all can't give God his praise today because you are still in a pre-resurrection date. I understand that after all the drama and trauma in your life, you still feel like it is Holy Saturday. But I want to encourage you. Jesus, he got up. And since he's up, you can get up too. What am I saying to you? I'm saying you know something about a dark night of the soul but Jesus is the light of the world let me talk to seven people on Facebook I know some of y'all are suffering in silence you smile when you feel like crying you encourage others when you need encouragement. You support others, but no one comes to your rescue. I see it, beloved. I know you are wounded. But let me tell you this. In today's scripture, verse 39 says, Jesus was vulnerable, and he offered to show his wounds, not like some of us who try to hide behind facades. We try to hide behind shiny things. We try to hide in our neighborhoods and behind our credentials and under our bank accounts there's a few of you who understand that there's value in your vulnerability the only way to recognize the risen Jesus was by the marks of his suffering Jesus said look at my wounds touch my wounds that's why you shouldn't hide or be ashamed about what you're going through beloved Come on now your wounds are the proof you've been resurrected your wounds are the proof you've been rescued your wounds are the proof You've been redeemed. Your wounds are the proof that Jesus is Lord. Your wounds are the proof that death no longer has the final say. It's because of your wounds. When you are a citizen of God's kingdom, you can be wounded and still willing. You see, Jesus was wounded and he's still fulfilled. The will of God. You might be tethered to your past, but you don't have to be trapped in your past. You could be wounded and willing because when you're wounded, but you're willing, you can have traumatic wounds in your body. Yet you are still willing to say, thank you, God, for my peace. Thank you for my healing, God. Thank you for my deliverance, Lord. I know, I can imagine that some of us were violated, mistreated, and mishandled by people we loved and trusted. But a few of us, even in the midst of our own pain and our mental and emotional anguish, we can still say that God is my protector, that the Lord is my strong tower, that he is a fortress, that he is my battle axe. He's a shield and a butler. And as long as I'm in his grace, he's a keeper. He's a keeper. And with him, we are safe. We can be wounded and willing folk who trust God for relief from our PTSD, anxiety, and depression. Those people who are wounded and willing seek therapeutic alliances and practice self-care. Am I preaching this morning? Because you realize that suffering of this present time cannot be compared to what God is about to reveal in you. I wish I had three people just to wave your wounds in the air. Come on and wave your wounds in the air. There's some of us who understand that peace 
does not come without problems. Did you catch that, beloved? Come on, Facebook. Look at me. Peace does not come without problems. Will you help me say that together? Peace does not come without problems. I like how Jesus stood in the storm. And he said, peace, be still, S-T-I-L-L. But sometimes in this wretched life, you have to steal your peace back, S-T-E-A-L. I wish I had three people who are ready to take their peace back in the middle of their wounds, even though you're suffering, even though you're on your last leg, even though you got more months after your money, even though you've been rejected by others, you still going to take your peace because you know what God said and you believe his word and you stand firm on him. Mm. I'm going to take it back. The quickest way that I know to lose weight is not intermediate fasting. It's not cutting your carbs out. It's not going to the gym five, six, seven days a week. It is dropping people who are giving you emotional stress. <laughs> Come on, you drop that extra weight. Don't let them bring that mess to your gate. Don't let them bring that gossip to your soul. Don't let them bring that mess in your house. You ought to say, no, baby. I'm on a diet from being trifling. I'm on a diet from being wretched. I'm on a diet this song because I am going to have my peace. I work too hard for this peace. It doesn't come easy. So when I achieve it, I'm I'm not going to let you, your mama, or none of them, 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 take it from me. It's too precious. It's too precious to let other people's problems rob you of your joy. You ought to forgive and keep it moving. Take back your peace by forgiving people who've hurt you. Take back your peace by asking forgiveness for people you hurt. You know that divorce almost broke you, but thank God it didn't crush you. You survived domestic violence and sexual assault, and now God is giving you healing from your wounds and giving you peace. You endured toxic relationships, and God delivered you out of them, and now you're ready for your peace peace. You survived baby mama drama and God is giving you back your I'm done. Back then you didn't understand why God had you in the place that he had you. You might have felt stuck. Like when Jesus was nailed to the cross. Humans believed that it was the nails that kept them on the cross. But those of us who are post-resurrection, peace-loving, beloved, wounded, and willing people of faith, we know that it was love that held them to the wood. It wasn't the nails. It was faithfulness that held him to the wood. It was not just because he is God. He loved us so much that he gave his only son. He gave his only begotten son and said, I want you to go down to the earth. And I want you to hang on that tree so Jossie can have a life. So this old country boy from Newport News can be a preacher. I want you to hang on that tree because what's going on in the world needs a savior. I don't know what he's delivered you from. I don't know where your wounds came from. I'm just here to tell you today that he hung there. So your wounds, so your wounds could bring you peace. So your wounds wouldn't stop you. You might be wounded, but you're still waiting on God to move. And while you wait, beloved, you might as well worship God with your wounded self. Let me just help two people and I'm out of here. You know what a wound is. 
that means it's in the process of healing. Did I touch somebody with that one? I don't know what's been festering and overflowing in your life. What's been leaking and hemorrhaging in your life. But God said, I'm closing it up. I'm putting a scab on it. And you can now walk around with your head up. You no longer have to be ashamed of your past. You no longer have to be worried about your future. I'm closing up the wound. I'm healing the wound. Thank God that my wounds are healed. That's why we ought to celebrate our wounds. Oh, you might as well give God some praise with your wounded self. There's empathy in your wounds. There is wisdom in your wounds. There's no longer hurt, harm, and danger in your wounds. No more spiritual infection in your wounds. For Jesus, he cleaned it up. He cleaned it up. He sutured it up. He closed it up. He stitched it up. He forgave it. And now, in the midst of my hurt, I'm going to give him a crazy, wounded, but willing worship. I'm healed. Anybody can confess that today. I'm healed. I don't care what you know about my past. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I know a few of y'all who are over 40 might be worried about that Freak Nick video coming out. Whatever comes out, I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm washed in the blood. There's nothing you can say about me that my God doesn't already know about me. So talk about my wounds as much as you please. But because of his goodness and his grace, these wounds are going to set somebody free. These wounds are going to encourage somebody. These wounds are going to help somebody. These wounds are going to make somebody celebrate their God. Come on and shout to the Lord. Come on and wave your wounded self. Come on and give him some wounded but willing praise in this house. Thank you, God. I might not feel like it. That's why I said give him a sacrifice. Is there anything you can let go of right now? Come on, there are three people in here who are still tethered and shackled to their pain. But I guarantee if you shake it off, God is going to move in your life. Starting here, right now, God is going to deliver from whatever holding you back. Wounded. I'm wounded. I might have to walk with a limp. I might still have pain in my side. But God said, peace in your wound. Peace in your mind. Peace in your family. Peace at your job, peace with your children, peace in your neighborhood, peace in your church. We can still be a great witness for God in the midst of our wounds, in the midst of our imperfections. Because Jesus can turn anything around. If he can take me and allow me to declare his gospel, surely he can take anybody. I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching with you. Come on, the word of God is like a two-edged sword with no handle. Whoever grabs it is going to get cut, beloved. But he doesn't leave you cut. He cleans it up. He cleans it up. He sanitizes it. He sterilizes it. And he closes it up so you can use your wounds to achieve your peace. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise in this house.
Thank you, God, for the wounds. Thank you for your wounds, God. God, we open up the doors of the church right now, Lord. Anyone who does not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. Maybe you feel like you were too wounded to be loved by God, but I'm here to encourage you that you are never too wounded. You are never too broken for the master. For the master, the, the potter can put you back together again. This is your time. Is there one? Is there one who will give their life to the Lord? Is there one who will rededicate their life? Beloved, I'm ready to have some baptismal services. Did you hear what I said? I'm ready to dunk some people. We got to go into the world and disciple people and have them baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How many of you all will help? How many of you all will help disciple and bring people in so we can lead them to Jesus Christ? Come on. I need, to, I need more people to be excited about that. This baptismal font ought to be filled every first Sunday. Did you hear what I said? Every first Sunday, we ought to be dunking new people into the family of God. If there is any candidates for baptism, now is your time. Won't you come and be dumped in the cooling waters of Christ's baptism? Is there one? Perhaps you've been looking for a church home. Somewhere you can grow, somewhere you can be wounded, but it's a sterile environment. Won't you make the creek your home? Won't you come? You belong here, beloved. This is your house. This is your family. Won't you come now? We'll walk with you. Come and be part of what God is doing here. Come and grow in your gifts and be held accountable to the mandate and purpose that God has put on your life. Come and be discipled. Come and be loved. For this is your house. Is there one, beloved? My final appeal is to love on all of the wounded and willing people on this hill and set free report. Will you help me lift up these names? Sister Dorothy Davis, we lift you up. Sister Texana Washington, we lift you up. Sister Mary Davis, Sister Lola Booker, Sister Yolanda Utley, Sister Irene Baldwin, Sister Ruby Watson, Sister Dorothy Bell, Sister Lucille Moore, Sister Janet Curtis, Sister Mary Hood Saunders, Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Christine Stewart, Sister Tracy Taylor, Sister Sandra Gray, Sister Lillian Spence, Reverend Clara Patterson, Sister Jean Hedgepath, Sister Karen Williams, Sister Dorothy McKinney, Baby Fancy Johnson, Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Tommy McLean, Brother Thomas Spence, Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Steele, Deacon Jimmy Evans, Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, Brother William Hodge, Brother Larry Norris, Reverend John McCray, Brother Justin Marley Hodge, Brother James Turk Sr., Brother Lamont Parton, Brother Dennis Slade, Deacon Sam Woods Sr., and Brother Marvin Carter. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. And all names who were not called know this. Your God knows your name. He knows what you're going through. He knows your wounds. And we lift you up. We're going down from this experience, beloved. Let's rise for the benediction. As we go down from this worshipful experience, I pray that whatever has been stopping you from believing what God said about you, it be healed. Whatever is causing you anxiety and stress, that you exchange it for the peace of God. May the Lord bless and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine to you upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the people of God said amen and amen. You are dismissed.